Uh, David Bitao, Bitao, the former CEO of Secret, knows a thing or two about anonymous networks and further why they might fail. Secret did not survive. Uh, he took the medium yesterday to tell people why apps like Yik Yak might be having financial trouble right now, even after experiencing impressive growth in the beginning. Yik Yak currently valued at around $400 million, having raised more than $70 million to date, is experiencing significant brain drain, including most recently the departure of its CTO, Tom Chernetsky. Along with that, download stats, traffic charts, surveys, as well as a source uh, to TechCrunch seem to be confirming that the once hot anonymous sharing app uh, popular among colleges and universities, particularly, is seeing a heavy decline in new users and daily usage. David Bateau uh, says that the reason private or anonymous social sharing services continue to plummet is that they fail to foster a long-term community. Instead, they become kind of flavor of the week, faddish trends that just kind of die off as quickly as they burst onto the scene. Um, I, it makes a whole lot of sense, right? Like, how do you build community around an anonymous network of people that, you know, I mean, they're talking anonymously. They're not, they're, their names aren't necessarily associated to anything. So what's the long-term commitment uh, in that scenario? Do you think uh, private apps like these are just kind of doomed to fail, Serenity? What do you think? I honestly, when you're describing the highlights of that Medium post, and I, I read it earlier today, it kind of sounds like almost every random social media startup, not just the ones that are focused around secrecy and privacy and, you know, trading on, on internal uh, small groups. I think it's a really, it's a really hard nut to crack the social, the online social sharing experience, especially because we have such mainstays already in the world. And yes, mm -hmm. People are not going to want to use Facebook for certain reasons, and people are not going to use Twitter for certain reasons. But when we talk about privacy and encrypted uh, encrypted communications in small groups, we have things like uh, we have things like GroupMe, we have things like Snapchat, uh, we have things uh, I forget what the the app is. I think it's Transmission or something like that um, that allows end to end encrypted uh, signal. group conversation. Signal. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not. The whole the whole post just strikes me as social media in general is a very hard field to crack into because it, it I feel like everything goes like this. We think about Peach. Remember Peach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really a great three example, day actually. Explosion, right? Yeah. Where it's everybody hears about it. It's hot for 0.5 seconds. And maybe for in the case of bigger social media networks, uh, it that lasts a little bit longer, like Yik Yak, and then it plummets. And it's nothing to do. I, I honestly don't think it's to do with how well their, you know, their communities are built or anything like that. It's just people are going to go where their friends are. And if their friends are all saying this app is great and this app is usable and it's simple and it's not overwhelming me with features, uh, then they're going to go there. But people by and large are not, I don't think we are really interested in moving to new apps unless we, either there's a must have feature that was not previously available, uh, or we're completely dissatisfied with the platform we're currently on. I think that's one of the reasons why Snapchat has done so well is that it took the idea of the, all right, the sort of ephemeral uh, social media mm -hmm. where it's here and then it's gone. Uh, it took that to, to great use and built a, you know, built an entire network around it. And kids who, you know, are coming into coming of age, look at something like Facebook and they say, well, that's, you know, there's way too much information there. And, you know, I know about kids who will create Facebook accounts and then temporarily delete them anytime that they log off so that they just can't be found on Facebook unless they're actually actively on Facebook. Huh. There's like lots of lots of crazy stuff. So but but I don't see us, you know, I don't I don't see users actively like with the exception of me wanting to claim a handle on a new social networking <laughs> site. Yeah. And I really don't sign up for things. I didn't sign up for Snapchat until Three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and I didn't claim my handle as a result. Someone else says Saturn, those jerks. I, I completely agree. I think this is interesting. I think David Bittau, um is sort of making a defense of why his app yeah, failed. Probably, um, and probably that's, you know, that that's why you do, that's what you, part of what you do on Medium. Um, I do think it's just in general apps failing or just the flavor of the month. 
and especially if you're talking about with kids. I mean, like anonymous apps are really popular with kids, Yik Yak, uh, Ask FM. Uh, they're, and they're going to move from one thing to the next unless it's a Snapchat, unless it's something that um, catches on and you really have no idea what it is and, and what it's just some kind of magic, like, you know, a unicorn. Yeah, it's um, like lightning striking. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't know. <laughs> I think there are some points with anonymous apps worth making. There's a lot of liability issues. I mean, there's always cyberbullying issues. And I know when he uh, got rid of Secret, that was kind of what he was saying. Like, people, mm -hmm. I don't want to create an app where people are just horrible to each other. Um, so I definitely think that's true. Um, and, and I do think that teenagers are just like, they don't, they only need Snapchat. Like they feel like they don't, you know, they use a lot of other little things, but mostly, um, that's where they are. And they don't, as far as I can see, they don't see a need for anything else, but that doesn't mean they're not going to, you know, I mean, they're, they're not, no one, I mean, none of us have buy, no, none of us really, I would move to something else besides Facebook if that's where everybody was. So, you know, it's no, there's no saying that Snapchat is the place that's going to be around in 10 years either. Mm-hmm. I do think there's something to the thought that an, on anonymous networks, you get a different type of communication. And by and more, I, I wouldn't say more often than not, but often enough, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's the kind of communication that, like, why would I choose to expose myself to that for a prolonged period of time? Things like bullying, things like, you know, really nasty, let's say, jokes or whatever the case may be, depending on the, you know, the audience that's frequenting it. Um, so I could definitely understand why an anonymous network might have trouble in the long term because its users in the short term realize that with it comes this great power of talking anonymously about whoever and whatever. But in the long term, it has to get kind of grating, right? Like it has to be kind of depressing to go there day after day after day and be exposed to the same kind of, you know, negativity uh, long term. I just don't know if that lasts. But but you're right. Uh, what, what both of you are saying is absolutely true. It's really hard to expect that there will be many breakout hits just in the world of social and even just in the world of apps, period. Uh, it really is like, you know, capturing lightning in a bottle. Uh, it seems like you might have a great idea, but for some reason it needs that extra spark to continue and uh, it's hard to capitalize on that. Well, the other thing about anonymous apps is they're not collecting information about us. And so, I mean, the reason why Facebook is so popular is we've handed over so much personal information and then they can deliver advertising based on that personal information. Yeah, no. If we're just all anonymous, you don't know what we like, you don't know what we're gonna buy, we're useless to them. Yeah, Yik Yik, Yik Yak, by the way, is supposedly working on direct message, they, they rolled out very recently the ability to have a name associated with your account so that they can bring in a little bit more of those kind of hooks, you know, not make it, make it maybe a little bit less anonymous. I wonder in this case if that just kind of like muddies the water for their yeah. service then because it takes everything that you knew about it, kind of turns it upside down. But yeah, it's probably probably the reason why. Right. Ask FM is another site where a lot of kids go to just, you know, ask any question anonymous, anonymously of anyone else. Um, and they, they're, the, those founders have moved on to, they just created a dating site called Mint. So I do think that there's no, uh, there isn't a long long tail for anonymous mm -hmm. apps for sure or maybe any apps as Ray was saying <laughs> doom and gloom <laughs>